Let's go ahead and answer that question, what happens if we let the Earth evolve for 100 million years? It should be an interesting result considering half of North America is already just one giant rock. And don't even get me started on Greenland. Before adding people to this beautiful little world, we need to add some food. And that's where the cows are going to come in. I'm adding a lot of them, I'm just going to sprinkle them throughout the world. They'll survive while they survive, and they will die where they die. I suspect things are going to have a tough time in Australia. And I am actually going to be somewhat diligent to spread the cows out so that they do, you know, go all over the world. I didn't even realize Antarctica was down here as a thing, so that's mostly going to be where the cows roam a lot. Now I am also going to spawn humans, elves, orcs, and dwarves. That way they all have a fair chance out in their own little body. Biomes. And since this is going to run for a really long time, I'm just going to put sort of people and things everywhere and they'll spread out naturally to where they want to go and not to where they don't want to go. Uh, they can even have some space down in Antarctica. Okay, there was uh, 500 humans, so we'll do about 500 of the other races. So there's some elves going down, there's going to be some in Antarctica, these races are going to fight each other to start, but eventually they'll just sort of figure themselves out. And lastly, the dwarves. To be honest with you, I'm not really sure how big this map is, so I don't really know what kind of population it can sustain. But we're going to start with a population of 2,000 for some reason on the year 69, but we're going to play through a lot. So let's let them get started and they'll emerge into their little empires right away. Well, they've uh, basically recreated the beginning of Canada very quickly. So, um, so far Canada is basically the global superpower. But that's really only going to last so long. They'll definitely group up and migrate and gather food and fight each other. So far, they're definitely forming up. Uh, South America here, they're mostly just busy killing cows and each other. Uh, Antarctica uh, apparently is a place where no one wants to be because they're all just, okay, they can't live on that stuff. I guess the lone takeaway from my world after one year is that the population got cut in half because it's not a very survivable world, apparently. But I think that's due to just a lot of them fighting each other right away instead of forming cities. Once, you know, one of them uh, is established as the dominant, then they all start to expand. Because so far it's a lot of humans, there's some dwarves, but it's a lot of orcs and humans it seems like. The population is still dropping rapidly. We went from 2,000 down to 745, but that was naturally going to happen because they did drop a lot of people in the ocean. Uh, Australia does have some life here, and I've seen this before with the orcs. They go a little bit crazy just killing everything. They're just going to have to uh, genocide some things before they settle down properly. But most of the continents are covered. I don't think Antarctica is going to support much life. Uh, we're waiting on Australia, but you know, same thing. It's a hard place to live. Uh, yeah, I can see where the humans here are having trouble uh, thriving because they've just got random orcs trying to murder them, but they'll figure that out amongst themselves. The UK has their own little uh, civilization going, so they'll probably be pretty happy over there. They have a bit of a buffer away from all the other monsters. Mm, I suspect the orcs are still kind of very strong because they took over uh, North and South America already. But it's really only been two years, so what we can do is turn the time up to times five and then we'll go through years quick. Look at all the changes happening now. And then things will settle in. The population seems to have stabilized at about 600 for now. But once they get established and into bigger, better empires and start to evolve, yeah, the uh, population will start to grow again. <laughs> Just not in Australia. About five years later, the population has grown 20%. Uh, it is mostly orcs. Again, I think the orcs are just so strong, they just destroy everyone else. But now we've covered all the continents except for Antarctica. But we do have some uh, empires down here in Australia. There's only three of them, but they'll slowly expand and fight and deal with themselves down there. It's officially 10 years since this whole experiment began. The population has grown uh, by about double, actually. It's up to 1,200 mostly orcs. No one wants to cross those mountains, not one little bit. It's been 15 years, and I think this is the most populated village at 61 people. And it's actually dwarves, uh, probably up along the mountains up in northern uh, Siberia, where no one wants to go anyway. So we'll let them keep going on and keep an eye. The years are going to slip right by. I suspect that once they get established and start evolving, they'll start to group into bigger empires and fight each other at that point, and instead of seeing like a million different little empires, we'll see four or five big ones. And I think we're starting to see that now. It's been about 20 years, and I think these two have maybe joined forces. They're at least a similar color. Uh, apparently these creatures really don't like Scandinavia. They're not touching any of the northern European countries. It's already been 30 years. I think the single strongest village is the Spears of Gear. Yeah, they look to be far and away the strongest with an army of 47, 2 out of 5 on their uh, technology. But it's only been 30 years. We've got a long ways to go. And it looks like we've moved into the Age of Sun. I'm not entirely sure what that means, but it's probably summer. It's strange for after about 35 years, there's still giant gaps in population. So I guess they're not fighting each other for resources yet. They're still just kind of using what they have. They're not running out of room. 
There are a lot of kings coming and going though, that might be like the average age right now because that was about 40 years. World population is back up to about 2000 where we started, so it only took 40 years to recover from um, my start. And officially the Spears of Gear, those little dwarves, have broken 100 population. So far they're the superpower. And besides that is going to be a team of elves that are pretty strong, but the orcs are definitely building some armies. And then when times 5 speed isn't enough to get us through the years, we can do sonic speed. Then we're going through a year, there's another year, this is another year, so we don't have to sit back and wait for them to do stuff, we can force it. I don't know if it's quite a year every second, but you get the idea we're going to go through time very quickly. So remember what the earth looks like now, because it's not going to stay this way for long. We're into a different age, the age of ash now, so things are going to get dark. But as they start to get better houses, they can fit more population in a smaller area. And they'll just be more efficient with using their resources because they'll combine empires. And we're coming up on officially 100 years since the beginning. And the Siberian Dwarves are still the front runners. They even have a nice icy port up here to do ocean stuff. Uh, their armies are actually getting pretty strong. They have a legendary wood slicer and all sorts of fun things. Uh, the elves down here, uh, they even have a little satellite colony down here. They're almost at 100 population. There's a few orc populations that are also getting strong. I really thought they would start fighting each other and combine before now. The races might not have been able to fight each other until now. I just changed a few settings. I'm a little confused as to what they mean, but we're going to let them get back to work. I've also turned disasters on. Didn't realize those were off. So we'll just keep passing through the years to see what kind of civilizations rise and fall. Probably mostly fall. The population overall is still growing. It went up another 10%. We are at about 2300 idiots in this world. Australia is still divided into its three little empires. Well, we do finally have someone declaring war on someone. We've got a few different ones. So now the empire should start to combine. For some reason, uh, these guys up here in like Siberia have declared war on Australia. I'm not one to judge, but I just think that's a very strange war to have. But they sailed all the way up there just to fight them for some reason. Uh, now that we've introduced war, population is rebalancing itself a little bit. And we have moisturized me for dropping a piranha on land. I'm not entirely sure how or why that happened. Don't care. Ah, uh, this is better. Now that we've enabled wars, we see a proper population growth. Uh, the Northern Dwarves are up to 200 population and everyone is fighting Australia for some reason. They just really don't like them. We're in the Age of Ash again, so things are a little bit dark. That's probably making people feel a little uh, depressed and unreasonable. and That's why they're fighting so much. Okay, the Spears of Gear up here are quickly taking over. They have 300 population and they're going to push over their uh, friendly dwarves over here. Meanwhile, South America is also going to come up and fight them. For some reason, these guys are not a fan. Okay, it's been uh, 200 years since this began and the populations are shifting. But now that we've enabled wars, empires are consolidating. So this current superpower, the Northern Dwarves, have an army of 145. There's six of eight villages under their control. And they're still far and away the biggest, but there's a few orc armies that are getting big. And the other races are maybe going to be extinct altogether pretty soon. If people have finally moved into Scandinavia, they're finally starting to utilize room because everyone's fighting everyone at this point. Uh, the Northern Dwarves are taking a lot of losses fighting whatever they're fighting down here, but they're going to fight the orcs, who they're actually defeating quite handily. The orcs are always quite strong, so it's refreshing to see someone actually able to take them on properly. Okay, well that empire all got consolidated into uh, all around here, so they're happily in the middle. Actually, South America now is also one giant superpower too, and even North America, so the mega empires are starting to form. And it's only been like 230 years. It's going to be crazy to see what keeps going. These dwarves are also super aggressive. They just don't stop attacking everyone, even if they're way down here in South Africa. The population has come back again to about 2100. It's been 250 years. And the people over here in Alaska are fighting like Eastern Siberia, uh, which is starting to break up a little bit, but the population of dwarves is almost 500 in this empire. And there's the UK, safely on a little island with a population of 20, probably being very scared of uh, the <laughs> rest of European superpower. The dwarves crossed 500 population, it's year 350. So we're down to like 10 or so empires in the world. We started with a whole bunch, like 30 or 50, and they'll only get smaller and smaller from here. Not sure what just happened to the dwarves, but their population just got decimated. I think they picked a fight with the wrong orcs and they fought back. So after 300 years, the orcs in South America have very good but only leather gear. Whereas the dwarves have kind of similar stuff, but they are starting to get some iron because they're probably better miners. But those two empires are far enough away that they aren't really directly fighting each other a lot. Uh, the neighbors of the dwarves are going to attack them. For some reason, there are other dwarves, but I feel like that's just going to end with all this turning into the Spears of Gear. The Northern Dwarves will just take over pretty much all of 
uh, northern mainland Asia. Yeah, so they somehow just, well, they, they, they took over India, but then didn't take the territory, but they burned it to the ground. Uh, the orcs in uh, the Americas are also taking over quickly because they pretty much got it all and it's 500 population. And now the orcs want to go and fight the northern dwarves, so their two superpowers are about to fight after 350 years on this planet. And these dwarves are still also fighting these guys in the east, but I'd imagine that's going to be a short-lived war depending on how long it takes the orcs to find their way all the way up there. The orcs are clearly the strongest. This empire split itself into a million different pieces. But given that, there's only like one or two colonies of dwarves and these only humans left living are still here in the UK, just hanging out on their island where everyone seems to leave them alone. But one bad move for some of these races really can screw them up because these guys were a superpower like 50 years ago. They were going to attack the big uh, dwarves up here. They probably let, sent their army out and then these other guys attacked them and took over their land. We're into the Age of Wonders, so now we'll get some fun stuff happening. Like apparently a conquest of Australia. I'm actually really surprised that there's still a giant empire of dwarves up here that are still thriving. Normally the orcs decimate everyone. But they're even pushing down here to the eastern coast of uh, Africa to take over this little bit apparently. Or that's already theirs. Maybe it's just going to be uh, endlessly orcs versus dwarves, but eventually one will win. This is going to go for millions of years if it has to. Uh, I didn't notice when this happened, but the UK has been um, depopulated, let's call it. I think Tall Ingrid here probably took over. The Spears of Gear up here, these dwarves are up to 600 population. And they just keep throwing wave of after wave of people at Australia. They want it so bad. And they want it so bad that, look, I can't even see their armies on the map. I think because they're all in boats headed for Australia or down here. This Dwarven Empire is starting to get like bronze and iron uh, weapons and armor, which should hopefully give them a chance against the orcs. I mean, they've clearly been doing well so far, so the more that stuff they can get, the better. They definitely still have the biggest army by large margin, so those kind of numbers will hopefully help them. Look at their leader's stuff. He's got legendary everything. Face smash. The dwarves did just take a big hit. They dropped from 700 to 400 population. I'm not sure where they're going or they're fighting these guys and they're not doing a good job of it. They should probably just focus on the neighbors, not three countries over, but who am I to tell them anything? Uh, this is the Age of Chaos. I'm not entirely sure what that means. It's a time of blood and death, but the world will be in turmoil and anarchy will reign supreme. Mm, that's fine. It's been about 500 years, so it's time to shake things up a little bit and make it exciting. Wow, the dwarves are suddenly going extinct in a hurry. They just did something real stupid. Oh, they split apart into a bunch of different empires. That's what happened. But that's the way it goes. They'll either put that back together and thrive, or they'll just get destroyed by everyone else. Well, this is different. We just entered the Age of Dark. It's been not quite 600 years but the Age of Dark, so I'm not sure what effect that's going to have on anyone. The population is 3,100. The dwarves are still going strong up here with 900 population. And there so far still hasn't been one dominant empire to take over the entire world. There's a few big ones right now, mostly in this area. The strong Takarad, whatever they are, are the first civilization to break 1,000 idiots. And they're taking up basically Africa and Europe all at once. Population is still managing to go up. And a few moments later, it drops down to 600. It happens that fast. Empires divide and split. It's now been about 700 years since the beginning, and there's only one empire of dwarves left. There's still a strong empire at 600 population, but the orcs are definitely slowly taking over. And the dwarves are being attacked by two different empires, one of which is sort of on the same landmass as them, so that doesn't really bode well for the dwarves. This might be the end of them. Uh, it is, however, an ice age, so that might change the dynamics of things because the ground is basically covered in snow and ice. Yep, basically it's cold, dark, snowy, things are gonna struggle to survive, so that might put these wars on hold. Or it might not because they're stupid. Yep, it actually put it on hold because the dwarves aren't getting attacked anymore so they can slowly repopulate. <laughs> Never mind, the uh, orcs just wanted to regroup a little bit apparently because they've gotten right in here and they're absolutely destroying the dwarves, which are about dead. But they did last uh, almost 800 years against the superior orcs. Well, RIP to those guys, unless they can recover from a population of three, which I kind of doubt. Though they're not really a war. Nope, never mind. Someone wants to go finish them off. All right, well, we're at year 850. I'm going to go make dinner and stuff, and we'll come back and see what's happened over the next millennia. Sometime later, and we're at year 2025, so close to the real world. And obviously very similar results, but as we can see, the empires are reduced again. Population has gone up to 6,000, but we've got all of seven empires on the board. The strongest of which has almost 2,000 people by itself. And they do actually look pretty advanced for orcs over those thousands of years. And they have steel weapons, at least. 
But by now, I really didn't think any of the uh, existing empires would still be around, but this one used to be over here more in Europe. It just shifted east and it's hanging out up there. Australia still seems to be an impenetrable fortress, and the game isn't loving this at this point. Trying to move 6,000 idiots around at 40 times speed makes it a little slow. Uh, the Red Azig, whatever this is called, has almost 900 people in its army alone, which is like four times bigger than the next biggest army, so they're definitely the superpower. Looks like there's a three-way battle going on with the Red Z attacking these guys, those guys attacking South America. But these guys would destroy everyone if they send their armies in. They could just take over the world without much effort. I'm just really impressed that Australia here has survived as long as they have without being taken over. There's only 400 players here. <laughs> I've just realized we have 6,100 people in this world. We've had 210,000 deaths. And only half of which were natural. I'm not sure what the other 110,000 unnatural ones were, but that's pretty funny. Yeah, there's lots of fighting and stuff going on. It's a little bit laggy right now, uh, just based on the fact that there's like 6,000 idiots running around. But there's a big battle going on here. Which means it's strong. Whatever is definitely losing quickly. Where Red Z is over 2,000 players. Also, I think a meteor just hit the bottom of Australia. So if it wasn't bad enough being there already, they now have a bunch of ore. Uh, so the Red Z is now basically on debatably four different continents. They're on North and South America and basically Asia pushing into Europe. There's also this weird disjointed empire that has like bits and pieces of the coast everywhere. I think they used to be some kind of superpower and tried to invade others but then got stopped and just kind of set up base wherever they were. Basically they were just really incompetent but the Red Z's just keep expanding and expanding. Pretty soon they might have all of this. But still, it's just ever-changing because these guys just lost all of this because this new empire just, I think, broke away from the existing empire. So they just kind of changed into these guys. Uh, there's also this weird little pink empire in the Caribbean that I didn't see before. I don't even know what these are, but they've sort of made a home in these weird spots. But the strong Techord guys who are getting overrun right now, they're 1500 years old. That's a very old empire. And unfortunately, the longer time goes on, the higher the population gets and the slower time moves because the game slows down to compensate for everything going on. And fittingly, we've entered the Age of Despair and wow, look at the population drop. But I guess the way to think about this is like it's exaggerated because there's not 6,000 people on Earth, there's 8 billion of them. So just add zeros to all the numbers and then it sort of makes more sense. So the Age of Despair is 10 out of 10. I'm not sure if they went through an order or not, I wasn't really paying attention, but let's see how they <laughs> fare through the Age of Despair. So far, it's pretty bleak. They mostly just exist in a very dark, cold wasteland. And as we're getting close to the Age of Despair, close to the end of it, the Red Aziz have uh, declared war on these guys. These are the two biggest empires and armies by a long shot. But so far, they're absolutely destroying these guys. But these guys' army was probably away trying to conquer the other side of the world. So yeah, the other guys just walked in and wow, destroyed them that quickly. The year 2130, they made it through the Age of Despair. They're all okay, the ice will melt. But naturally, sometimes in the world, we have outbreaks of illness and disease. Like a zombie infection. Mm, I've been pretty hard on Australia this whole time. <laughs> but they deserve it. It's Australia. So let's drop a little bit of zombie plague right there on half of their armies. And then watch them panic to try and take care of that. Because I know zombie plague spread very quickly. You've got to take out the zombies and then uh, kill whatever they turn into. And then keep killing them. And it's actually really hard to contain. I don't know if zombies can swim anyway. So let's uh, sprinkle some zombies in everywhere. Uh, every every country's going to get its very own zombie outbreak, and then we'll see which one survives all that. Judging from the drop in population, I'd say the zombies have a bit of a foothold somewhere. Northern Africa here is uh, having quite a zombie problem. But that sounds like a them problem. We'll just let the zombies continue to go, and I'm pretty sure they're sprinkled throughout the world, so they'll either solve the zombie problem or they won't. Madness, however, makes everyone fight everyone and strips them of the very empires they belong to. So what happens if we do that to basically everyone in the world? Okay, that might have actually ended the world. Uh, because 90% of the population basically attacked everyone. And the world is left of just remnants of empires and big ugly scars in the world. It'll take eons to rebuild, and they will. But that's what like 10 trillion years of evolution looks like. Rinse, repeat. 